Since its beginnings, ASP.NET Core has come with a dependency injection system. With this system, we can centralize the mechanism that provides the different dependencies of our classes in one place. Using dependency injection is a good practice that allows us to apply the dependency inversion principle to have flexible software. In more concrete terms, when we use the dependency injection system, we configure what class to serve when a particular service is requested. For example, here we have in the helpers folder of our project an iFile storage service, which is a service for our application. Now we have the following requirement. We want to serve Azure storage service when we are in production, and we want to serve in app storage service when we are in development mode. The idea here is that Azure storage service is a service that connects to an Azure storage account to save files, and in app storage service is an implementation that saves the files in the local file system. So in production, we want to use Azure Storage and in development mode, we want to use in-app storage service. So typically when we want to configure a service, we do the following. We say services here in the startup class in the configure services method. We say services, let's say add a scope, I file a storage service and Azure storage service. Though this is really inflexible because we are hard coding here that we want to inject an Azure Storage Service implementation when we are requested with the iFile Storage Service. So what can we do? Well, we can use a factory. What is a factory? A factory is a mechanism within your software which is responsible for instantiating classes and returning those instances. The SP.NET Core Dependency Injection System allows us to define our own factories in order to add custom logic when selecting the class we wish to serve when supplying a service. If we go here, if we click here and press F12, we are going to go to the class that has all the overloads of our scope. And here we can see that we have, for example, here, a func i service provider t implementation implementation factories so as you can see we can pass a func which is a function or method that returns an implementation of our service and it receives an i service provider so that we can get whatever service we need so that we can instantiate one of our implementations this is exactly what we need so let's go back to the startup class and let's work on this the first step is to delete this from here because we don't know ahead of time what we're going to return. We only know that it is going to be a class that implements the iFile storage service interface. And now we're going to pass an anonymous function here. So we're going to say service provider because as we saw, our phone can receive a service provider as a parameter. And here we can use a lambda expression. And here we can do the following. We need to discern when we are on development or production. So for that, we're going to use the iWeb host environment service. So we're going to say EMB service provider get required service iWeb host environment. And so we're getting an instance of the iWeb host environment service. This service that we're using here is the exact same one that we're using down here in the configure method. And as you can see, we have is development as a helper method, which is exactly what we need to say if we are indeed in development. So let's say if EMV is development, if we are in development, we want to return new in-app storage service. And as you can see, we need to pass EMV, an instance of iWeb host environment and an instance of IHTTP context accessor. So for that, we can come here and say HTTP context accessor service provider get required service i http context accessor and we can bring this namespace microsoft experonet core http and now we can pass this instance http context accessor and here this is a method so let's invoke it and now we can say else if we are not in development then we want to return a new azure storage service instance and here we can pass and I configuration. So for that, we are going to say var configuration internal service provider get required service I configuration, and we can pass this I configuration. As you can see, we can pass configuration because we have 
this configuration field here, but because we are going to move this method into its own class, that's why I am instantiating a new I configuration. So now let's put semicolon here, and now we're ready to test this. We're going to see that when we are in development, this line of code is going to execute, and therefore we're going to supply an instance of in app storage service whenever we ask for the I file storage service, and when we are not in development, like in staging or production, then we are going to use this instance of the Azure Storage Service class when we request an iFile Storage Service. So how do we know when we are in development or production? For that, we can use a environment variable. Let's go to here to the Solution Explorer. Let's right click Server and let's go to Properties and let's go to Debug. And here we have environment variables and here we have Espionet Core environment and its value is development so we are in development mode so that means that if i press f5 we're going to execute this line of code and as you can see we're running this line of code now let's press f5 and let's go back to visual studio let's stop the debugging of our application by pressing shift f5 and now let's change our environment variable to production let's change this to production let's press enter and now this line of code is the one that should be executed. Let's press F5. And as you can see, we're executing this line of code. So excellent. We are solving our business need. Now, you may not like to have all this code here in the configure services method. You can actually put this into its own class. So let's go down here. Normally you will put this class into its own file, but just to save time, I am going to put it down here. And let me make a static class, public status factories. And here I am going to put an static method, which is going to return an iFile storage service instance. I am going to name this file storage service. And this is going to have a parameter, which is going to be of type iService provider. And let me bring this namespace and service provider. And now I can copy this code. I can cut this code and paste it here. And as you can see, we don't have any errors here, but now let me change this to configuration internal. And now let's go up here. And now I can delete this from here. And I can say factories dot file storage service. And as you can see, we are passing as a parameter, our factory, which is in its own class. And as you can see, this is not even necessary because C Sharp is smart enough to know that since this method returns an I file storage service, we don't need to specify it here, so I can delete this. And now we have services at a scope and the factory. And this factory is this one that we have here. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.